Oh, hallelujah. This is an exciting year. Pastor uh, Dorothy said the doubt and unbelief is going to be destroyed in this place and broken in this place. Amen? Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I've, this has been a really awesome fast. Uh, David and I are going to give the words that he's downloaded to us for the year and beyond. The year, this year and beyond. So I'm going to begin... And then David and, and I, we don't look at each other's stuff. In fact, anybody that sends us prophetic words, we don't read until after we're done. Because we, we don't, we have so many people that send us words. And I want to so bad look in there and see what God is saying. But um, tomorrow I will. So, Lord, we thank you. This is an exciting time that we live in. This is a birthing time. And I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for your wind blowing on this place. You are so faithful to us. You are so faithful. Let the wind of your spirit carry these words into the highways and byways. Let the wind of your spirit, Lord God, carry these words overseas to unlock, to loose, to free, to heal, to deliver, to set those who are in captivity free, to open the prison doors and to heal the brokenhearted in Jesus' name. Amen. Sure, sure. Okay. As in any time, in, as in any year, the Hebraic and Gregorian calendars intersect. The New Year's intersect. And uh, last September, 5778 was ushered in as the head of the Hebrew New Year. Amen? In Hebrew, so I'm going to talk about both numbers in both of those because they're very significant and they blend. Um, in Hebrew, each number associates and interacts with the Hebrew letters and produces a rich picture. For instance, the number five represents grace, the number seven, perfection, completion, or maturity, and the number eight, a new beginning. And let me preface this word. This is a very unusual one for me. Because I'm going in and out of different types of prophetic utterances. Um, in the past, it's been a lot of the Nobby, which is God speaking in first person. Well, there's some of that. And then there's some a prophetic teaching type delivery. <laughs> and then there's the prophet seer gift that's in operation. So I guess this is part of boot camp. We're learning about these these things. So, 5778 is rooted in the 78 portion. 70 is represented by the Hebrew letter, and hopefully you guys will get this up, the Hebrew letter ayin, A-Y-I-N. And the 8 is represented by the Hebrew letter chet. According to Robert Hedler, 70 represents the season that we are in, and A-Y-I-N as a letter is synony synonymous, wow, this is amazing, as an I. Ayin means I in Hebrew, or increased sight, or insight. As, as in every service, and our oversight says this all the time, and other speakers that come, you all being moved by the Spirit of God, preach, you preach the sermon. The Holy Spirit preaches the sermon through you. So if you come into the church new and you're expecting a sermon like every other church, you're in for a surprise. Because sometimes the official sermon 
is laid down because the official sermon was already preached. (laughs) But we miss it because of a religious mindset that has us in a box of this is the way church is supposed to go. And we come in and we miss the richness of the body of Christ and the gifts that flow from the Spirit of God that bring scriptures, that bring teachings, that bring forgiveness. A teaching on forgiveness through Mike, through the Holy Spirit, that I would never have thought of. But it was rich, and it goes with what God wants to impart. Isn't that cool? All right. The number eight in 5778 is represented by the Hebrew letter Chet, which is synonymous with the image of an open gateway or door. This number also represents brand new beginning or an open gate or door which leads to a new beginning, a new kairos of opportunities. There are new opportunities that we are walking over the threshold through the gateway to possess. And this is an awesome picture that I want to put, uh, that they're going to put up on the screen. And this is a Hebraic picture from a, uh, a Jewish, a Messianic, that represents 5778. Isn't that awesome? They had this at the International Conference in a Glow, Chuck Pierce. And you can see the gateway. Do you see it? What is so awesome, and one of these days we'll scan our original, uh, our original logo for gateway. Now it's a rounded, but we're going back to the original because the original is identical to that, except it goes a little bit pointed at the top. And I was researching, and sure enough... There is a letter, that is the letter Chet, see it, open gateway, open doorway, that actually has, they depict it with a little bit of a point on the top. We have been declaring open gateway, open doors, Kairos opportunities since God gave us that new name. Isn't that cool? All right. The year 2018 contains some very powerful and interesting meaning as well. Likened to the Hebrew year 5778, but different in that it is enlarged to mean complete new beginning. (laughs) Complete new beginning. It also means, hold on to your horsies, judgment by the word of God. You know, everybody closes their ears and gets scared when the word judgment. Oh, we don't talk about judgment. Well, let me tell you what it means. Have you ever looked it up? It means weighing, making decisions, weighing it in this situation against the word of God. Making a decision based on and balanced and looking at the word of God. Shouldn't we all be doing that? In our daily life, we need to judge ourselves and say, okay, now, are we in line with the word of God? Did you know that you're walking in and judging yourself? Everybody goes, oh, don't judge. Well, we're not talking the condemnation. You're going to hell. We're talking, woo, let's weigh this against the word of God to balance it. We throw things out that are vitally important because it's all through the Bible Even in the New Testament, it's in there. By weighing certain facts and elements with the word of God. It also means double fruitfulness. This year is double fruitfulness. It's Father's blessing. And listen to this. The complete, say complete, putting off of the old man. So... As I preach and as the Lord releases his word, Lindsay, you don't know what the Lord had given me. And up here, she was declaring the old man dead. And then up there, she was talking, what was it? The, the shoe and, and the old shoe won't work anymore. He's saying something. Okay, while browsing in downtown Denver, uh, 
we were going through stores at Christmas because we've never been downtown during Christmas and browsed and stuff. You know, it's always been up in Breckenridge or something like that. And so we were down there having fun, and we went into a store that all the things made in there are from Colorado. You know, they're all Colorado artists and different things. And the first thing I saw when I walked in was this necklace. (laughs) And I don't know if I can get it up, if I can get a camera. Which camera should I go to? That one? Okay, Fred. So you can see this. And, and as a day here, you're going to be able to zoom? Whoa. Don't zoom in on my face, though. <laughs> don't zoom in on my face. Which way do you want me to turn? Right here? Perfect. Can you see that? All right. It is a, it, there's a inside of a watch right here on the front. It's an in, the inner workings of a watch. Then over the top of that is a sword. And of course, it's a key. And then that which unlocks the lock are two double hearts. And when I looked at it, I go, wow. And the Lord said, this is key to the prophetic word that I want you to deliver. And so I took, we bought it. But then you know what happened? Then what happened was it was misplaced i started looking through the bags and i go well where did it go this is the prophetic word of the year where'd it go and you know then you're going devil and you know you know truth revealed and angels go get and all this stuff and i thought well you know lord i guess i can just talk about it and then all of a sudden i found it in my purse but i had looked in my purse so i'm not going nuts David had put it in his pocket when we were out shopping, and he forgot it was in there. So he put it in my purse. But see, sometimes the word of the Lord can be misplaced. And the Lord's exhortation to all of us is, as the word of the Lord comes forth through myself, through David, through you, even when it's happening in the river of gateway. Don't misplace the word. Don't let it fall and get lost. Don't let it fall by the wayside. This is the word of God, people, that's flowing in the church. These are holy words. These are life-changing words. And because it flows with a lot of fervor in this place, sometimes we take it for granted. It is our future. It is our future. The Lord is calling us into the future. So, the watch part of this. Time. This is the time and season for many extremes within the natural and spiritual realms. In fact, both realms will converge on many fronts in this year of the gateway and open door. Obviously, there has also been tremendous interaction between heaven and earth. But 2018 invites entirely new levels of supernatural encounters for both believers and pre-believers. In fact multitudes will begin to birth into the kingdom because of supernatural heaven-to-earth experiences. Suddenlies, lightning coming, and changing a a Saul into a Paul. Suddenlies coming. In now time, spiritual battles are being fought and won by heavenly hosts, released and commissioned by my word, declared upon the breath of my bride. As a result, generational bondages and spiritual blindness, doubt, Pastor Dorothy, and unbelief that have kept millions in chains are being stripped and broken. So you heard right from God, sister. Stripped and broken. Do you understand that as we are worshiping God, as we are declaring, as Kevin made that declaration, as others made declarations, bondages, 
and, and generational curses and bondages were being broken because the angels were sent out on our declarations doing war and battle on your behalf. This is a reality. This is a reality. This is not fantasy. This is reality of what's happening right now in the spirit realm. Your declarations of truth, your declarations of my word have caused an eruption. Listen to this. Not going to. Causing eruptions of harvest in the spiritual realms. We are harvesting right now. As we worship, we're harvesting because things in the spirit realm are being set into place, ignited and released in the spirit realm. The time of harvest is at hand. A manifestation of that which is birthed in heavenly realms will be realized in the natural realm. Prepare for the arrival of babies. Prepare, plan, and expect to receive. Prepare, plan, and expect to receive. Get the receiving blankets ready for the overflow. One of the dreams that I've had, I, I was waking up, and, and, and it was just... In between waking up and still in the dream, I, but I was waking up and I audibly, this was an audible voice that spoke, prepare to receive. Now, I've not had the audible for a long time. You know, it isn't something that I usually, I hear God other ways, but this was an audible voice that said, prepare to receive. So I'm delivering that to you. Prepare to receive. This is the time, say time, for family. Who spoke about family? Janet did. Janet was talking about family. This is a time for family to begin running through the gateway of salvation and restoration. I am a family God. I created family and my I in attention is on my family. Not one tear you have shed for your family is lost. It is saved in a bowl within the chambers of my heart. I am actively working and building my family, not only within your personal household, but within global bridal gatherings worldwide. I am building my household of faith. But unless I build a house, those who labor to do so, do so in vain. Allow me to have my way in your family. Allow me to tear out, remove, and renovate. So often you stand in the way of the renovation because of what you see, hear, or feel during times of renewal. But trust me in the process. Trust me with the results. We are in renewal. It's happening. It's happening. It may not look like renewal to our eyes. It may not feel like renewal. But God is tearing out, he's removing, he's shaking up, and he's renovating. So he, in other words, he is preparing us as a body, as a church, as an individual to receive what is ready to pour out in this season. On your families. The enemy hates families because family reflects who I am. His hatred toward family comes from the fact it releases the sound of oneness which weaponizes my people to defeat his every plan and strategy. He hates family, has hated it since the beginning because of the agreement power of one. Family and community are keys in opening the gateway of breakthrough and release within my body. Put time aside, time aside. Literally, disregard it while we commune together in our heart-to-heart -heart worship. 
The enemy uses the ticking clock to steal you away from your physical family, your church family, and from me. Recognize his strategies, and rather than glancing at your watch, focus on the eyes of your spouse and children. Look into the depths of my spirit. Open your spiritual eyes and look. You will be surprised at what you see. Time is a key to open the door to an upgraded flow of one sound within your household and spiritual family. The sword. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. For the word of the Lord... The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing piercing even to the dividing division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I can actually feel an intensity of the spirit on this. There is an urgency an urgency. The word of God is a sword of truth, but it faces assault on daily basis, on a daily basis. Unfortunately, much of this comes from within the hierarchies of the body of Christ. Leaders wrapped in self-righteous, self-appointed mantles take on false authority to eliminate sometimes entire doctrinal sections of the word of God because it doesn't fit into their flesh placating sermons. Exposure is coming, bringing light to those in leadership whose thoughts and intentions toward the word of God is self-serving and heretical, that means heresy, of relevance. See, it's, I'm sorry, heretical. And I wrote this. Actually, Jesus did. That's why I'm having a problem with it. Those things hidden in the darkness And camouflage, in a camouflage of relevance, will be forced up into the light and truth of God's power and living word. So let me read that again. Those things hidden in the darkness and camouflage of relevance will be forced up into the light and truth of God's powerful and living word. The eyes of the innocent and ignorant will begin to open to the emptiness and powerlessness, causing many to run after the fullness of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many will begin leaving systems that have a form of godliness, but deny its power. 2 Timothy 3.5 I am cleaning my house, says the Lord. Systems, movements, churches, and people who wrap themselves in a form of godliness will begin to shake and quake in 2018. My sword is dividing between soul and spirit and the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I love my children, even those who betray the very thing they promised to uphold, my word. I love them enough to bring my discipline, to woo them back into the safety of my truth. The entire earth shakes and groans for the manifestation of my bride to step out and up into the purity of her true identity, walking in the fullness of my word. And and this also goes to religiosity. Religion kills. The spirit gives life. Little groups that get people that get pulled off into uh, groups that have no accountability and begin to put the, and I see it, nooses and bondages and chains around people all in the guise of being godly. And prophets, absolutely. My people, where do you place your total focus and attention? On a human being? Do you exalt flesh and blood? Who do you try emulating? A system? A movement? A person? 
There is only one worthy of full attention, only one worthy of exaltation, only one worthy of emulation, Yeshua Jesus, my only begotten son. Any system, movement, church, and people who wrap themselves in a form of godliness will begin to fall and disperse beginning this year. If they have built on foundations void of the fullness of my word, they won't be able to stand when the storms of exposure blows as a result of compromise. If your reliance is in or on anything other than Jesus Christ, your house will shake. All things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of my truth must come down. The word of God must be embraced in its entirety. Entirety. Placing it above all consequences and persecutions that may erupt from doing so. For those who solidly and unashamedly stand on the full word of God, I see a huge, and I saw this, a huge gate open in heaven. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing river, a sound that causes other sounds to vanish in its wake, a river of explosive proportions breaking through and pulverizing everything that stands in its path. The sound alone from this river destroys demons. Just the sound. Principalities territorial spirits, networks of evil, wickedness in high places. The lion of the tribe of Judah roars and calls this river the revelation of my power. We don't know what that really is. We have a little idea of what the power, the dunamis, miracle working power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, resurrection power. We have a little idea. But this river is being loosed and broken forth for the, upon those who can handle and stand the weight of it. And the only way that's possible is if you're anchored in the full word of God. The full word of God. We are talking tongues, the gifts of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. We are talking Torah. We are talking from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between and nothing torn out. We are talking about redemption, the blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ. We are talking the name of Jesus and Yeshua. Compromise will dam the river. God loves us. God loves his body. He loves us all. Do you want the full thing? Are you satisfied with what we have? The key to unlocking this door is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. The body of Christ must be firmly anchored in the word to steward the weight of and to ride this river. The never before miracles, the never before signs and wonders ride upon the waves of this river. Explosive prophetic insights, precision discernment, and world changing faith Ride on its waves. The harvest of millions is its plan and purpose. This river is not interested in making us famous. The purpose, that's right, there's only one name. The purpose of it is harvest. That's the purpose of it. It's not to make a show. It's not to say, oh, look at a gateway. All these miracles are happening. Yuck, yuck. The purpose is for the saving of the harvest, to bring the harvest in. Amen? The double hearts, 
Love, Jason. Love conquers all things. Without love, we become clanging symbols of noise void of all power because love is the power. He is love. This is the year of double fruitfulness. Double every fruit of the Spirit, especially love. To love the unlovable, to love our enemies, to love those who despitefully use us, love those who persecute and refute us. His love brings confusion to sickness, disease, and infirmity. You want to bring confusion to the enemy? Love. His love dismantles bitterness, anger, and hatred. You want to confuse the enemy of hatred, bitterness, and anger? Love them. Love those people. His love destroys destruction and death. His love covers all. You are a new creation in Christ. That's who you are. The facts of the matter, we're new. We're lovers. We are. He's in us. We have all the love we will ever need residing within us. Within us. We're a new creation in Christ. Those old things have passed away. Behold, everything's new. This is good news. It's an absolute reality of the truth of my word. 2018 presents an open door gateway to the full truth of who I created you to be in my kingdom. You are born and purposed for such a time as this. Come to me if you carry weariness. Come to me if you are burdened down by the weights of past hurt, pain, discouragement, and trauma. Leave the grave clothes of false identities behind and cross over the threshold and through the gateway into your rightful position bought and paid for by the blood of my son. And that's in your soul. Spiritually, we already reside there. The truth of the matter is we reside seated in heavenly places. We're not just some loser. He's the loser. Just like in the prophecy, the enemy's under our feet, under our shoes. The problem is not our spirit. We're forgiven. We're riding high, going to heaven. But I want to live heaven on earth rather than the other place on earth. And it all depends on what we do with our soul. I heard somebody say, well, we're perfect and, you know, everything's great. And I'm thinking, well, that's awesome. The Bible says, but how come we don't look like it? How come we don't act like it? Because it's a little problem with our soul. And Pastor Reese is doing a seminar, and that'll get our souls all tuned up. Right? It's time to completely walk out of the old man and walk into, which is the word 2018 means this. It's time to completely walk out of the old man and walk into the realm where impossibility bows and relinquishes to the miracle working realm of Christ. Yeah. Ephesians 1. We're going to read this whole section. And I declare this over this whole body and those watching. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes, say eyes. Of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty miracle working dunamis power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. And he put all things, say all things, under his feet and gave him to be the head over all all things to the church which is the body the fullness of him who fills all in all 
and you. Turn to somebody and say, and you. Then turn to the other person. Say, and you. He made alive who were dead. It says were. Say it, were. I was dead. Who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once, say once, walked. According to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves once, say once, 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 in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, were dead, in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Right? And raised us up together. Say, raised us up together. And made us sit together. And made us sit together, where? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. This is who we are. This is who we are. Wow, this is who we are. We're not victims. We might have been victimized, but we're not. I am not a victim. I'm victorious. I sit with my Jesus in heavenly places. And I rule and reign. I rule and reign. Wow, you rule and reign. That in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. I am not the workmanship of the devil's plans and purposes in my past. I am not defined by my past. You are not defined by your past. That's unless you want to be. If you want to be, again, that's your will, that's your soul. And if your will says, I want to, I want to live in this. I want, I, do, I, I sort of like this because I get attention or whatever it is. It's our choice. And I'm being hard right now because I see the potential in you all. And to placate your flesh because you might give a bigger offering. I have to answer to my God. And our ministry is to bring out the best in all of us. Right? In us. I'm, we're preaching to us. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Love is the key that will literally unlock every door and gateway in 2018 and paves our journey with favor and influence. Say favor and influence. Walk, breathe, eat, and drink in his love. Bathe everything in love so all that is seen is him let 2018 be the year we can genuinely say as he is so are we in this world amen
Here we go. You ready? All right. I want you to read this word because this is like a really cool word. And listen to what she had got. God, he will hold us in his wings and say, I will see you in heaven, but I will always be in your heart and I will see you in church and at home at school. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, so be it. All right. Um, you know, it's uh, really pr pretty profound what the Lord does. Uh, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on what the Lord is doing. Got plenty of time to do that. I'm gonna, I told Didi, I said, you know what we need to do? We need to play a video before we start the service and say this is, this is not like you're you getting some Texas, sister? You want to share them with us? Or are you, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, this is Pastor Risa is receiving Texas. Pastor Risa. Um, so, um, I, I, you know what we're going to do is, we're gonna, what we're going to do is, we're going to put up on the screen, we're going to have a little clip. Didi and I are going to say, all right, now this is not your everyday church. This is like the Book of Acts church. And, and, we, will, and we will not, this service will not be the same. And we guarantee you that the word of God will be preached. It will be preached in Logos and Rhema and oftentimes together as one. And it will not look like any other church. And it will, it will, not, it will not taste like any other church. What we have to do is we have a responsibility as a church, as leaders, as pastors... We have to do what God tells us to do. And if not, we are in trouble. I said this the other day to someone. If, 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 if we don't do things right, heaven does not smile upon us. And I, I want to just say this. So if you're new here and you've never been here, please count how many times the word is preached through song, through hymn, through decree, through every, every, from beginning to the end. Come at seven. Come at seven o'clock. Through the songs, the words are being preached. And then all the prophetic things that the Lord's doing and all those things. I mean, think about this. I just want to just say this. What happens if we had the everyday run-of-the-mill service? We would leave. We'd be, the first. We'd be the first out the door. All right. I want to just see. Let's, let's just take one example. Jacob, where you at, brother? There you are. Okay. Now, what happens if we would not have allowed the Spirit of God to move? What about his back? What about the multitudes? That too much time. But that does take too much time. That eats into our teaching time. Say it, say it, my, my dear. Time is our tool here. Amen. Amen. Think about, okay, how many of you, this, just a show of hands. Okay, Janet had the prophetic word about how oftentimes the betrayers, the betrayals take place not from the outside world, but from inside. From how many? Judas. Or, or just relatives or things being said. How many times? Raise your hand. How many of you touched by the word? Okay. Now, what happens if we would have silenced the voice of God? How many people would not have gotten set free or delivered? You understand, this is not ever going to be a church where the Holy Spirit or the Father or the Son are quenched. We will never do it. Okay, and I want, I want to, it's just really important that I say that because when you think about that, uh, hey, Matthew, Matthew, Jason here, before you get out of here, Jason's going to pray for you. Jason, you didn't know that, but I volunteered you. Okay, okay, we, we talked, Matthew, okay, you good with that, buddy? We talked about doing that. All right, here's the word that the Lord gave me. Allow love to be the foundation, the structure of everything that you do for me. 
be delivered from fear and its torments. Micah 4.10. This, is a, this starts off the scripture. You have to read this two or three times to get the gist of it. But what it's talking about, it's talking about deliverance and it's talking about redemption. If you start off, go back and look at it. I'm not going to take the time to look at it. If you would, just look at it. Micah 4.10, be in pain and labor to bring forth. It's like a mother having a child. When a mother has a child, it is, it's not, I'm glad God didn't make us men to have babies. Here's, I'll say this. I've said this many times. Pearl Bailey said, it's like taking... It's like taking your tongue, taking your upper lip and pulling it clear back to the back of your head. Okay, so everybody got the picture? All you mothers, no problem. You have full understanding. Okay, okay, here we go. I'll, I'll get out of the, I'll, I'll quit moving around here because I got to get this done here. Be, be in pain and labor and bring forth a daughter of Zion like a woman in birth pains. For now you shall go forth from this city. And you shall dwell in the field, and in Babylon you shall go. There you shall be delivered. There the word, there the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Be delivered from the past mistakes. That was also mentioned earlier. That you have been unable to shake. From this day forward, demonstrate my power. This is for each and every one of you that call me Lord. You are one that will be different from most of my children that have chosen to live their lives in the world. You are one that will be different from most of my children that have chosen to live their life in the world. According to your obedience, you will release. Now listen to this. This is profound. According to your obedience, you will release me to accomplish my will. I want you to take these words, if you, uh, the Lord just had told me this, to take, for each and every one of you, to take these words personally. Don't take them as the body, but take them personally for your own lives. And let these words, let these words prepare you. Nice to see you, dear. <laughs> Turn to Romans 16, 25. Terry, Terry, are you pulling this up? I want to see how good you are back there. Who's on Tibby? No, Tibby, sit, sit there in that seat, sister. Here we go. Here we go. Romans 16, 25. Now, to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation and the mysteries kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest, and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. The nations were talked about earlier today, too. According to the commandments of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. I ask of each and every one of you to dis discover the depth and the width and the height of my love. There it is again. Because when you discover that love, you will love in, expression, in expressive ways that you have never been able to. My love reaches the deep and the wide. My love reaches to the nations and touches the nations. I ask of you, I ask of you that you would enter into the secret place, that place where you, will be, you are seated in heavenly places, and ask of me to bring revelation to you concerning my love that I have placed in you. It will astound you. Ephesians 3.17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. For my expression of love is to be released internationally in your businesses. So get this, business owners. In your businesses, in your schools. <laughs> I just had the word about school. I thought that was cute. <laughs> I thought that was really cool, actually. <laughs> in your schools, in the stores, wherever you go, and wherever your, whatever your situation is, including the most important, 
your families mentioned also. Business will change if you will allow my love to be unconstrained in you. Be the one who reaches out with loving words, caring hearts, reaching out to bring peace to everyone who has no peace. Be gentle and kind to those who are mean and ugly. Bring shalom, my peace, to those who are in turmoil and have no rest. Be humble and live your life out with a contrite heart, being continuously in those who will not, being courteous to those who are not so loving. Ooh, that's hard to do, isn't it? Be the one that expresses my gifts out to the world, for it will draw them to me. I adore each and every one of you. For you are my, you are not just my creation. You are my handiwork. You are my expression to the world. Love as I have loved you. Humble yourself and you will win the world with my love and your humility expressed. Lives will change. Isaiah 57, 15. For these, for thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and the holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to receive the spirit of humility and to receive the heart of the contrite one. Return to the simple gospel, but with the dunamis power <laughs> working in you and through you. The power that treads upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You declare and decree the very things that I speak to you, releasing my heavenly hosts in that very battle, wow. for the battle is mine, saith the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Luke 19, uh, 10, 19. Uh, let's read it. Behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means, nothing shall by any means hurt you. In other words, you are tougher than hell and anything that hell can throw your way. Amen? Okay. Uh, work over to Deuteronomy eleven twenty four. How's she doing anyway? I haven't been keeping track of her. She's been staying up. With us. I'm just kidding, Tippy. You know, I'm just messing with you a little bit. They can take it. You got it, sister? You, you, you can take it, can't you? Every time. <laughs> it's, it's not easy standing, sitting in, er, and standing in that back booth back there. I've done that before. You know, it's wonderful when you're saying it, when you're in that. When you're in that back booth, if no one looks back at you, you have had a good day. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Deuteronomy eleven twenty four. Every place in which your soul and your foot treads shall be yours. Amen. For the wilderness and, and, and Laban, for the river, from, the river, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread yeah. of you and the fear... Yeah of you upon all the lands where you tread, just as he had said to you. Yeah, go, sister. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I was thinking, I was, I was thinking of uh, General Mattis. And he said, what? Mad Dog, Mad Dog. He said, he said, the reporter asked him, now, what is it that keeps you up at night? And makes you concerned. He said, let me tell you something. He said, what? I'm the one that creates concern for others. <laughs> you get it? Okay, here's a quickie story. And I got plenty of time. I, I have paced myself. Now, I'm talking about John Osteen, not Joel. Okay, John, Joel's dad. I've told you this story, but some of you haven't heard this story. 
One day, John had a vision. And he said these, this older demon was taking this little younger demon out for a walk. And he was training him. It was a training day. And so he was walking along. And he said to the little demon, run in there and just cause torment. This is what they always do. This is their response. Just go in there. The little fella just went back in there. And he came back out and had a smile on his face, so to speak. I'm, I'm putting a little... T- Putting a, little, putting a little jelly on this thing, and a little sweeter, a little sugar, because I can't remember the whole story, but I'll get to the gist of it. So he comes along, and then he comes to the Osteen family. And he says to the little, younger little demon, he says this. He says, don't go in that house, little feller, because they will beat the tar out of you. So be it for each and every one of us, eh? And each and every one of you. <laughs> okay, 1 Samuel 17, 47. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with the sword and spear. Now, this is the key. This is the key. Oftentimes, we want to do things in the natural, in the flesh, in the physical Listen to this. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Amen? Amen. Love each other. There's that love again. As the Father has loved me. Love each other as the Holy Spirit and I love each other. I said in my word, 1 Corinthians 13, if you have not loved, you have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Love your neighbor. How many of you have been struggling with loving your neighbor? Okay. Man, bake him a nice, awesome chocolate cake and take it over to him. You know, that's just it. After January, right? After January. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you, Jan. Thank you for that. Hey, let me, let me tell you, this is really a cool report. Let's, we're going to divert just for a moment. Fasting. Don't talk about food. Don't talk about food. <laughs> Watch the Food Network. Or, or diners, diners, drives, and dives. <laughs> okay. Where was I at? Do you remember? Fasting. There you go. Rob sent me, this is really, this is really, this is really cool. Rob sent me this video. He said, I just want to, I just wanted to send to you this group of doctors over in Europe. I think it was either Germany or France had discovered. Did you see that? It, they discovered how significant it is for people to just fast with water. Physically. There are people that have been in a moment. They've gone on periods of fast for like 20, at the most 40 days, where they were just in a water fast, and they are getting healed of diseases. They are, the diseases are getting all the, yeah, mental things. Alzheimer's, there were some of them. I can't remember all of them. I was only halfway through the video. So I want to just say this to all of you. Fasting not only starts off as a physical thing, but isn't that interesting? The Lord uses fasting to bring healing to people. And they don't even know it's the Lord bringing the healing. He, isn't it? Is that not cool? God is good. God is good. Well, thank you, Lord. And his principles, I his principles are for everyone. His principles Anyone are for everyone. Anyone that wants to participate. You know, science is finally catching up, aren't they? Amen. You know, the Lord is so far ahead of all our scientists. We love those scientists. Most of the time we love them. Yeah, we, do. we have to pray for them sometimes. But we love them. All right, here we go. Oh, Romans 13, 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. And every, it is important that you know that I am love and that I love you. Wow, there it is again. About every area of your life, you, let me, let me start over. I, am, I love you. 
and care about every area of your life, from the smallest thing to the largest thing. That which concerns you concerns me. I have placed inside of you the fruit of the Spirit, my fruit of the Spirit. And housed in this fruit of my Spirit that dwells within you are the resources that you may draw from at any time. I have given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Resting in me in the years to come will rocket your faith, for without faith it is impossible to please me. If you will live a life of faith and trust and rest in me, while I'm processing your requests and preparing each and every little thing that concerns you, and each and every one of these things that are of concern for your family, wow. your friends, even yourself. And then, if, if you'll notice, if you were to look at this, he will go back and he'll reiterate and bring up a point. Just in a little bit, he'll bring the point back up again. Go with my fire that is before you and behind you, preparing the way. This fire that I surround you with not only protects you, it prepares the way that I have destined you to do. I have gifts that I placed in each and every one of you for what I created for you to do. I am completing what I have to do in you, setting things in order, delivering you from the ways of this old. Yeah. Interesting again. Yeah. That have affected your ability to know what I'm saying to you so that you can clearly hear what I'm saying to you in the midst of a storm or in the quiet. Know my love that you might love. 1 Corinthians 16, 23, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love be with you all in Jesus Christ. Amen. John, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 23. John 15, 9. How's Tibby doing? Is she keeping up with me? No, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm just going to keep harassing her. I just, it's just part of, I'm feeling led. You could take it, sister. Thank you. Thank you, really. Thank you, all, all you guys, for all you're doing. I just, we appreciate you so much. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Wait, I say wait, on what I'm doing. Be patient. Here we are at this point again. Wait on what I'm doing. Be patient. For many times I was ready to release the answer to the very cry of your heart, and you lost heart, allowing anger and fear and torment to overtake you. Not only did you not receive what I had for you, it caused you to mistrust me, the supplier of all your needs, the one who loves you, who agapes you, the one who gave his life so that you could have abundant life forever. Wait on the Lord. Psalms 23, 27, 14. Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And it has an exclamation point right there. Once again, this will be a great year for you if you will be free from the things that have overwhelmed you, that tormented you with those fears. You will be free if you will allow me to bring my glory to the areas of your life. Let him bring his glory. Everything changes when his glory touches it. Oftentimes, as you are praying to me, you ask me things that have already given you the answers. I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. I expect you to use it and not ask me to do what I have given you to do. This is why many of you do not see the answers to your request. If I ask you to do something, then I, will, I have equipped you to do it. What good, what, a, what good father would ask his children to do something without knowing that he has been given everything he needs to succeed. I would have you wait at times for the answer to the request. Now, get this. Stay, pay close attention to this, please. 
I would have you wait at times for the answer to your request. I desire for you to keep on seeking, keep on knocking. If you have not seen the answer to your present, to your request, it has a much deeper purpose than you know of. Trust me, so that you would understand during that repetitious prayer, I hear every supplication of yours to bring understanding to you. I would have you to know that I'm doing deep, deeper. I'm, I'm going deeper and deeper, wider and wider. Every time you ask of me, I will accomplish those things to its fullest measure that I desire it to do. Be patient with me. Trust that I will perform what you ask of me according to my timing. Omniscience has its privileges. To get it? All right. I'm going to just explain. Sometimes, uh, sometimes when people are reading, and especially there's been a lot of overwhelming, a lot of words that are being spoken. Let me just say this to you. And maybe I didn't. I, I, you know, I, I'm, uh, I would make the Lord tired if I was typing everything that he was giving me. So uh, I have this really cool software. I can just speak into it, and it, it really pops out. Some, and then I have to go back and correct it. Yeah, it's really good for me. Um, but let me just tell you what the Lord wanted it. He would, so if you didn't get this, get it. When you go to the Lord, and why would he say that in Matthew 7? Why would he say, keep on seeking? Keep on. That's, that's the purpose. When you look at the context of the scripture, it says, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. And what he's saying to you is, keep on pressing in, keep on praying, keep on declaring the very things. And what he was saying is that when you begin, you keep doing that. And you see, sometimes like if it's, it feels like vain reputation, but what he's doing, he's going deeper and deeper and wider and wider. Because he knows the effect. This is the thing that you've been, you've been interceding about, and these things you've been praying about. He has to do it. He's, he's off an omega. When he does something, he does it. Finished work. So what happens in the process when we bail? What happens? But he says, know that, that I will answer those things according to my will that you've asked of me. He will do them. Just be patient. Amen. Amen. Okay, very good. Getting to the end here. Almost done. Um, uh, Matthew 7, 7, you know the scripture. Um, open, everyone who uh, asked. Rec- okay, here, let's just hit this. I'm going to read this. Ask that it will, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or what man is there among you who, if his... If, his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, who is in heaven, give you good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do, me to do, whatever you want me to do, you also do also to them. For it is the law of of the prophets concerning the former things release them forgetting those things which are behind you if you don't it will hamstring you anybody everybody familiar with horses got some horse people in here yeah what happens when a horse gets hamstrung did he what happens when a horse gets hamstrung Because they can't, they can't walk properly. They can't. Okay, and so it changes their their gait. Okay, how they their gait is how they. Okay, it's thrown off. Okay, does that kind of sound familiar to what happens with us? Oftentimes, huh? It's kind of interesting. Okay, um, Philippians three thirteen, brethren. I do not count myself to have it apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. Get rid of that past. Concerning those things that you fear, I would ask you to deal with them in this order. List each and every one of those fears that hinder you and, and keep, that keep, that keep you tied to the world. Then I would have you to confess having allowed fear to overtake you. And declare my word over each and every one of these fears, letting my word wash over you 
the washing of the water of the word, and wash those fears from your life, destroying your chains to the world, releasing you into the calling. Last paragraph. If my people will do these things, they will tru- they, they truly will change the world and they will be changed. To change the world, setting things in their rightful place, setting in place my order for this hour, for there's going to be a great blessing for your obedience and there will be a great pain for your disobedience. For you shall see the answers to your petitions, your supplications, your intercession, your requests that are being made known to me. Exclamation point. Very good. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the things that you have, uh, you have placed inside of us, this, these personal words that you have given to us as Pastor Didi and myself and all the other prophetic words that are going to come. I ask, Lord, that you would bring to our remembrance these very words that you have spoken to us, the rhema as well as the logos. And Lord, I ask that you would come and you would allow your word to penetrate and permeate our very being so that there will be change. Oftentimes, we keep going around the mountain and we keep going around the mountain and don't change. Let this time and let this hour and let this 2018 be the time where we decree and we declare that no more will we follow after the old, but that we will enter in to the new. We thank you now for all that you're doing, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Frederick, Frederick, make your way up here, brother. One second. Um, three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came into my room. When I say Jesus came into my room, it's not hallucination. The Spirit of God comes and talks, and it's a word. And it's face to face, he talks to me. And there is several ways God talks to people. But first, he thro- talks to his through his word. So we need to understand. So the Lord told me, Brownsville revival is going to happen in Colorado very soon. Amen. And the Lord told me to tell Amen. Gateway Church, Amen. this is a season, this is a time. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 says, I am pleased to give the kingdom of God to you. What is kingdom of God? To move in power of the Holy Spirit. This year, the Lord says, 2 Corinthians 6, 1, you are a co-creator with God. If you're ready to create something with Jesus, you need to make yourself available. And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 says, O sleeper, wake up, the light of God is shining upon you. This year, the Lord is telling us to wake up, to have a commitment in our spirit to dive into the word, to eat his word. The word can destroy the lack. Word is an answer. Yes, we love miracles. We love, you know, we move, we move, we move in that. But the word is what is going to set you free. So this year, the Lord is calling. And the other day, I was praying for San Francisco, one of the family. I was ministering, and then I told, I given one word. God released the word. In one week, she has seen the miracle. She was shocked. Your word has spoken, and it has happened. It's a big thing. I don't want to get into details. What I mean by that is the word of God is the power of God. So we cannot replace something with something in our own desires. Lord, you've spoken this word, but God says, my word is what you need to carry. And walk in my word. Right. Second Corinthians 5, 5, 7 says, we will walk by faith, not by sight. So we walk by faith, we will live in the word. We walk and we live in the word. I just want to bring today, and I just want to pray. Is that okay? Can I pray quickly? Yeah. Father, we come to you. Thank you so much for your word. Father, Isaiah 55, 11, as you said, so that the word that comes out of my mouth, 
it will not return to me empty it will accomplish what for what i have sent forth father we speak your word we pray in the name of jesus couple of months god has given me the vision iran and then you know the middle east country the revival is going to happen we already know in the news couple of months he has spoken the word and god is faithful to do his word what he has spoken to us father we pray we want to walk according to your word father would you please I speak for Gateway Church right now. Oh Jesus, Romans 5:5 I speak over this church. The hope does not discourage us through his holy spirit. He pour out into our hearts to love God. Father pour out the holy spirit fresh fire this year that we love you. We love your word. Father, we love you. The Lord says, my dear people, have my word in you i will do this word to you according to first corinthians chapter 15 57 says praise be in the name of the lord who gives the victory through our lord jesus christ yes. if you want to see the victory in your life have the word of god right. thank you jesus yes. father we praise you urensi lasum huris picanto this language interpretation says my dear children first samuel chapter 1 verse 17 says eli answered to hana go in peace what i what god has promised for you he will do it today the lord says what i have promised for you my dear children you've been waiting The Lord says this year you will see the promise is going to be fulfilled in your life. Thank you Jesus. We praise you. The Lord says Roman 2:11, do not lack when you're serving. Serve the Lord with zeal, with zeal. Amen. Thank you Jesus in Jesus name. Amen. amen. So Thank we you, need brother. to listen Thank because you, the Lord is emphasizing the word of God. He emphasizes through the word that he gave me through Pastor David through um Fedrick. It's important, it's vital. there's a th- common thread that's going through. Brooke, did you need to say something? So uh 70 eastbound is closed. Uh so people have been rerouted through uh high uh 40 and that's about 10 miles an hour. An alternate route would be would... down here. Yeah. Yeah, it's backed up all the way to the hill. So How about uh, how about an lookout? alternate How about lookout? How about just down all the way to Golden? I mean there's Yeah. You no could right you could here. possibly go around you to can, to Golden. You can take but, it uh, there's people coming. That'll be less uh for you. It's scenic, but it'll drop you right in uh Golden. Yeah. And, on 6th uh, Avenue. Otherwise Evergreen 285. Okay? Let's pray about the accident. Uh Father in the name of Jesus we speak your word we send your word to heal and to deliver these people from destruction we call forth the hosts of heaven to strip down death to strip down destruction in the name of Jesus we speak life we speak resurrection we speak salvation in Jesus name and Father God we believe a good report from heaven in this accident Lord God and we thank you for all of us going with the angelic hosts Father God surrounding us protecting us and leading us as we go home in Jesus name Very good. amen amen